Welcome. This is going to be a test of a single speed pump versus a variable speed pump. This is actually a remake of one of my most popular videos. I had the Pentair Superflow variable speed pump and a 60,000 gallon filtration goal. This is like maybe a, you know, kind of a deeper 1632 pool that we're uh, filtering the volume of the pool three times in 24 hours. That's where we get 60,000 gallons from. And what we're going to do here in this particular instance is we're going to be testing this one and a half horsepower Black & Decker variable speed pool pump. And I'm going to be running it under the same parameters that I ran for the Pentair Superflow pump. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the flow rate, the electrical consumption, and ultimately the cost for each of these. Let's just jump in and get started here. So we'll go ahead and fire this thing up. We're on a two inch suction line here. The system total dynamic head is 25 to 30 feet of resistance. Let's see. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna start at maximum speed here. Uh, display, there it is, of course. So 3,450 RPM. Let's take a look at the pressure gauge here. That's right about 10 PSI, just, just a shade under 10 PSI. Go over here to our flow rate, a very impressive 100 gallons per minute. And let's look at the power consumption. Top right corner is the number that you want to be interested in. 1.56 kilowatts, it's 1,560 watts. And just to confirm, that's what we've got here. 1,560 1, watts or 1.56 kilowatts, 100 gallons per minute on that single speed side. Since the pump is running, let's go ahead and verify these numbers here. Three thousand RPM. Over to our flow rate. Eighty six gallons per minute. Just over one kilowatt or just over 1000 watts and then that's what we see right here 86 GPM just over 1000 watts let's switch down to 2000 rpm now there we go 2000 rpm fifty five gallons per minute 343 watts of power consumption. I actually have that down as 348 watts because that's what it was five minutes ago. Uh, but voltage is actually variable. So as voltage goes up by minute amounts, these numbers can actually vary just ever so slightly. But as you can see, it's a very, very minor tolerance. Let's go ahead and show that 1000 RPM. So at 1000 RPM, like if you didn't have a flow meter, you wouldn't even think it's moving water. But it's actually moving a ton of water at 29 there a second ago let's see if it comes back we'll check back in for 29 because that's what i have written down 68 watts of power consumption and there we back are back down to the oh the 29 was there i swear it was i'll show it again if it comes up because i think it's bordering it's like 28 and change and uh so it's just showing us the 28 right now and sorry to verify there's our number there. So let's go ahead and talk about these numbers a little bit. We want 60,000 gallons after 24 hours. So with a single speed pump, if this pump only has one speed, then we're getting 100 gallons per minute. It's using 1,560 of, uh, watts of power per hour. After 10 hours at maximum speed, we would have 60,000 gallons. That's our filtration goal. So that's ideal. Let's just jump over here and make sure we're going to match that. So we're gonna do three hours at 3000 RPM, six hours at 2000 RPM, and 15 hours at 1000 RPM. Let's just say this is a starting point for comparison. Every single swimming pool is different, but as you can see, sometime at higher speed, about double that at a mid speed, and then long hours at lower speeds, that's kind of the hallmark way that you can save money with a variable speed pump. So your swimming pool is going to need more dialing in than just, yeah, just put these numbers in and boom, there you go. Not really. Every pool is unique. You have to take more things into consideration. This is just a starting point for comparison. Besides, that's what I did in the last video as well, and we're just trying to make an even comparison between these two. So as you can see here with our flow rates, 86 gallons per minute 
55 and 29 times 60 minutes times however many hours, our total 61,380 gallons. So we're achieving our filtration goal on both sides. So it's basically the same thing, right? Well, not exactly. Let's look at our power consumption here. So at 1.56 kilowatts per hour, after 10 hours, it's 15.6 kilowatt hours. You pay the nationwide average anyway is 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So using the nationwide average, that's two dollars and three cents per day. After a month or 30 days, sixty dollars and ninety cents. Now, if we extrapolate this out over a reasonable service life expectation of 84 months, we see the total cost to operate this pump to keep this pool clean at sixty thousand gallons a day is five thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars and sixty cents. It's an appreciable amount here, especially when we jump over to the variable speed side of the board here. So here we have our cost breakdown as well. And again, the cost, the cost for the, uh, or the amount of power that we're consuming here at the low speed was 68 watts. That's like a, it's like a 60 watt light bulb. It's, it's crazy low. Decimal 068 is how that's written in when you're uh, typing in as a kilowatt. So our total power consumption on this side of the board only 6.24 kilowatt hours times 13 cents per kilowatt hour. That's only 81 cents per day, 24.30 per month, just over $2,000 at 84 months of operation, 2,041. That is an, a realized savings of $3,074.40, almost $3,075 by choosing the variable speed pool pump, running it 24 hours a day, achieving more filtered water per day than a comparable single speed pump. It really is a slam dunk every which way you look at it, but the, you know, the more examples like, like this that we have, the better. This is a complicated calculation, so the more times you see it, the more it starts to make sense to you. I hope you found this information helpful.